welcome back. Today we have something a little bit different. Our very own Robert Namor facing off against Destiny in a debate over impeachment, Russian collusion, and several other topics. If you don't know who these guys are, Robert Namor is a Republican who has run for office. He's excelled in debate teams and is well known on this channel for being an expert on all things Russian collusion and impeachment. Destiny is a left winger who invites people to his Twitch and YouTube channels to debate a variety of topics. I'm not real familiar with Destiny, but he's got a large following of around 250,000 subscribers. So kick back with a snack and beverage and enjoy the show. Make sure to subscribe to Robert's channel as well. I'll put a link in the description and pin a comment. But all um, right, hit me up. What you got? Yeah, yeah. So I just uh, I did a live stream the other day. I had met several people that were big fans of yours, and I've been watching your content off and on for about a month, and they recommended I get in touch with you about, um, I think they believe that you're for the impeachment of Trump uh, based on the impeachment hearings. Um, That's a pretty hard one. I'm in favor of wherever things wind up. I mean, it kind of seems pretty bad right now for the Trumpster, but yeah, I mean, I'm mean, whatever happens, happens, I guess. I'm not like super hanging my hat on impeachment or anything. Okay. Um, why do you... Uh, why do you think that I still haven't really got a clear answer for why the Democrats think Trump should be impeached? Is my understanding is it's not just a quid pro quo. It's that it has to be a quid pro quo with ill intent behind it for a personal gain or something like that. Would you agree with no, that? No, I don't think it has to be. There doesn't have to be personal intent at all. Congress has the power to um, appropriate funds for other countries. The president doesn't really have the power to mess with that. And it seems like Trump was trying to extract political favors from Ukraine um, in an effort and then was holding that um, that aid a hostage to them. It seems to be what all the testimony points to so far. Well, I kind of disagree that that's the criteria for what should be impeachable, because it seems that in foreign policy, particularly with aid, we use quid pro quo all the time. In fact, that's exactly what Biden admitted to doing. He personally told them, we're going to withhold a billion dollars in loan unless you fire this particular prosecutor. The reason it seems to me the Democrats are okay with that, they say, oh, but that was for the good of the country. So therefore that quid pro quo, even though it was congressionally approved aid, was okay. So I don't know as much about the Biden stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't really care about the whataboutisms that troubles like to pull when it comes to other types of politicians. It's entirely possible that Biden did bad stuff as well. I don't really know. I don't really care. I don't particularly like Biden. Um, but it is not common practice for the president of the United States to hold aid that's already been approved over another country's head to extract information off of a political opponent and then to request that said political um, said investigation be made public. Like it's very clearly and, and the, the fact that that quid pro quo, whether it even happened or not, the idea that Trump attempted to do it um, is just bad in and of itself. And, and that offense alone is impeachable. Well, it, I don't think it's what about as and here's why the actual what Biden did, the fact that it's potentially being investigated. And it's not just Biden, by the way, this is somewhere the Republicans go wrong on. It's actually the Obama administration because Biden admits in his uh, speech. So, I'm sorry, before, just to cut off this whole line. So let's say that Obama and Biden did bad stuff yeah. and can and can be prosecuted for it. Could Trump still have done bad stuff as well? No, because if Trump is using his position as the leader of the executive branch, which is to enforce laws, we have a long tradition in this country of the executive branch looking into things like corruption, including people from past administrations. For example, yeah, but we, we don't have a long tradition of, of the president. Well, well, firstly, when it comes to looking into the corruption or whatever, the the, the um, Department of Justice historically stands separate from the office of the presidency. It's not normal for the president to direct the, the, the Department of Justice. Those are two institutions that are supposed to stand separate of their own, aside from the fact that the um, president makes the appointee or, or, or appoints the, um, the head of the DOJ. But other than that, the institutions are supposed to stand separately, first of all. And secondly, it's still not within the purview of the president to hold foreign aid that's already been approved by Congress, which already has the power of the purse, to take that foreign aid that's been approved and to use that as leverage against a current political opponent is highly irregular. None of that is normal. But it's because the reason that it's an irregular situation is because what was being investigated itself was an unprecedented situation. Can you name me one other time in the history of the United States that any executive branch official has withheld congressional aid to fire a prosecutor? I can't, but again, that's what about is Can you name me another time in, in presidential history where a president has asked another country to dig up dirt on current opponents that like, yeah, uh, we saw that with Obama. We know for a fact that what Obama was doing was talking to people, particularly in the five eyes agreement, all of our allies about finding potential crimes that Trump committed. 
whether it be colluding with Russia or other things like that. And by the way, so Obama- firstly, Hold on, hold on, sure. hold on. Again, okay, so this is a really common problem with a lot of Republicans. Um, mm -hmm. These institutions don't function this way. The FBI doesn't function under the order of Obama. Um, Obama does not order the FBI to talk to um, allies that we have. So for instance, in our Five Eyes um, alliance, we, we don't, that doesn't work that way. Obama wasn't investigating Donald Trump um, the FBI had investigations related to Donald Trump. That's not an Obama investigation. Right, but we know that we can even see through text of Strzok and Page that we know that Obama was asked to be kept aware of this. And we also have, we it's unprecedented that we've ever had a situation where personal phone calls have been leaked, not just leaked like with Trump, but actually had to have the transcript released. So we have no idea specifically what Obama was talking about to his counterparts in these countries. All we know okay, is- wait. Sure, there, go ahead, I'm sorry. so much, yeah. Keeping Obama informed is part of the job of some of our intelligence agencies. It doesn't mean he's directing them. Just because somebody's keeping you informed doesn't mean that they're giving you direction. Well, but you should the president should probably be aware of ongoing investigations right. like this. Absolutely. I mean, I think that would be a good idea. But well, right. But well, you could say the same thing with what we see with the transcript with Trump's call. Trump didn't say I'm personally directing. He said I would like you to cooperate with. My DOJ and Barr. Trump literally personally requested that the investigation into Biden's son be made public by Ukraine. That was a literal request by Trump made that has been supported by multiple testimonies given so far. <laughs> Obama has done nothing of the sort. You never saw anything where Obama was saying, in fact, Obama's even said that he was like, that he tried like very hard to keep that stuff separated. It's one of the reasons why Comey went public with the information that he did into like Hillary's emails. There's a lot of weird like people trying not to say anything publicly. That was a huge trend in Obama's administration. Where people try not to come out publicly and say stuff. But in, in Trump's administration, everything has tried to make like be made public like very quickly. Like, well, two two points on that. One, that's just I don't believe that characterization. In fact, we know that Obama lacks regulations like never before to ensure that different agencies under his administration before Trump took over were able to share all the information of the, the Trump Russia collusion investigation, which predictably then led to record amount of leaks. For example, we know that. Clap, or I'm sorry, uh, Brennan was working for CNN, suggested to Comey that Comey actually brief Trump on the P dossier, then use that hook of the P dossier for CNN to run the story the next day. So there was clearly unprecedented leaks, whether they were coming straight from Obama or not. The fact is, he was there were unprecedented leaks. I don't know if we just call it unprecedented, sure, but there's a lot of leaky shit right now. There was a lot of leaky shit in Obama's administration. There's a lot of leaky shit in Trump's administration. Like when you get to the level of being a billionaire, you're going to be surrounded by a, a fuck ton of people, of course. And we've seen that Trump has severely compromised judgment when it comes to who he surrounds himself with. For instance, that, Giuliani with or Cohen or Roger Stone, like all these people that are you know catching charges and shit, or just are fucking insane. So it's not really surprising to me that there are leaks, and I don't need a conspiracy theory to explain the fact that a lot of the people around Trump are quite leaky. Yeah, but it Manafort, wasn't... Manafort, yeah. The leaks, the leaks almost universally are opposed to Trump. And most of them are for people at the tops of the intel agency. So, for example, we know that the IG report found that he, it recommended a criminal uh, referral to Comey, but said beyond that that he had broke FBI policy by leaking information, some of which was classified. Like, we, we know for a fact that happened. But... Again, that's, sure, that's it's possible that other people made like mistakes. This is we're, we're what about is I mean to like a huge level. It's like it's possible the FBI made mistakes. A lot of people believe that Comey made mistakes when he went public with a lot of different things. When he talked publicly about the Hillary email stuff, a lot of people believe that was a mistake. Um, but none of these mistakes exonerate Trump. The right. fact that people leak bad stuff about Trump doesn't excuse the bad stuff that's leaked. And I don't think you need a greater conspiracy to explain like all the leaky shit around Trump. Okay, that it's neither here nor there, I guess, for the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm making. Sure. Is that if there was a reason to, there's three things that Trump wanted an investigation of, or that what he talked specifically that all the testimony says. By the way, there has been not one person that testified that Trump personally said that he wanted anything in exchange for age. It's all, or in exchange for this congressional aid. It's all based on their presumption, they said. I can believe you. A lot that. of testimony, a lot of presumptions, a lot of people that have the understanding that Trump was threatening to withhold aid or wasn't going to exchange aid without that investigation, not only being started, but being publicly announced. That's, so, that's what the testimony so far, thus far has shown. Taylor yeah. said that he heard through one of his aides who heard through one of Sondland aides that Trump told Sondland that in the phone. So then when we get to Sondland's testimony, Sondland says, I presume there was a quid pro quo, but when he's specifically asked by Schiff, he says, oh no, Trump, sp I asked Trump an open-ended question. He even said he probably used a four-letter word, but basically he said, I said, what do you want from Ukraine? 
And Trump said, I want nothing. I want no quid pro quo. I want Zelensky to do what he promised to do when he was elected. Yeah, so, he said that explicitly after things were heating up and leaks had started about it. Of course, it's you, there's it's strange to me because you would never apply the same standard to somebody like Obama. Like unless Trump literally is on a re recording saying like, I am requesting a formal quid pro quo from Ukraine. I want to like unless you have those exact words, it seems like nothing he says or does will, will like like prove that he's probably engaged in some pretty shitty behavior. Well, like, I, I mean, like just on a withdrawal, like sure. pulling back on a broader frame, are you really comfortable that the president of the United States is making requests to other countries to publicly declare an investigation into a political opponent? It seems insane to me. Yes, I'm perfectly fine with it. Just like I was perfectly fine with the Obama administration and all of the people under them, rather, even if you don't think Obama is personally involved, making sure that the president elect of our country, Donald Trump was not a Russian asset. I okay, was okay firstly, with that as well. Okay. So two things. One, Obama doesn't direct the FBI. Okay. These institutions stand separately. Two, fuck Obama. I don't like Obama. I don't care about Obama. Well, I'm not here to defend Obama. Obama could have fucked up too. That doesn't exonerate Trump. The pivots to Obama doesn't help Trump look any better. Okay. Take Obama or the FBI or anyone out of it. Did you personally think there was enough evidence to warrant an investigation into Trump and his team as to whether or not they colluded with Russia? It seemed to be the case, yeah. Okay, but no one said, well, wait, it's unfair for the Democrats to be spearheading that investigation because it's their political opponent. We were told the implication is so severe that we could possibly have a president that's under the thumb of uh, one of our enemies that we need an investigation, right? Do you recall any other massive investigations going on at the same time about a potential political person? Like Hillary? Yes. <laughs> Like that probably cost her the election. Trump's stuff was pretty secretive until I think it was after he was elected. We started to find out way more information related to the FISA warrants and everything. If you want to complain about an unfair investigation swaying the last election, you should be looking at the Hillary email thing, not anything related to Trump, which there was way more evidence for than anything related to Hillary's email that got dragged out for years. Well, again, that's neither here nor there than just the general point. We could say that it is okay for at points for people to want investigations into their political Sure, but opponents. the general point was, and maybe my timelines are fucked, I don't recall there being public statements about Trump being under investigation while he was running for president. There were. Harry Reid, for example, I think four days before the election, wrote a letter to the Senate Then he also released. Mother Jones also did an article about the dossier. So there was stuff out there. Also, if you want to get technical about it, Comey's admitted that the only reason he reopened the investigation was two things. One, there was a whistleblower within the FBI that knew that Strzok had been sitting on Wiener's laptop for over a month which that's kind of a funny phrase sitting on Wiener's laptop but anyways uh the second point is Comey admitted the reason he did this was he assumed that Hillary had the election in the bag and he didn't want this to be an albatross over her neck for her first three or four months when people found out oh the FBI sat on this laptop until after the election so I don't know if that's true if that's something that he wrote in his book regardless of whether or not that's true that's still super far removed from anything we're talking about I agree the idea that in the idea that in well okay but you brought it up the idea that investigations <laughs> hurt like Trump more than Hillary is asinine. The investigations most likely would have been like the tipping point that cost Hillary her election. The emails were in the news constantly for a year. We didn't start to hear about the FISA stuff, uh, about all the stuff related to Manafort and Carter Page and all these other people. We didn't start to hear about this until after Trump already won the election. So the idea that these investigations are, are causing somebody not to get elected, I mean, if you want to take that stance, sure we can, but then you'd be defending Hillary, not Trump. Well, I didn't, I didn't make the point about Hillary at all, and I didn't say that the investigations hurt Trump more than Hillary. I'm merely making the point here that we expect our executive branch at times, it's okay. I don't mean it had to come directly from Obama or Hillary or Trump or Bill Clinton, whoever the executive is, but we expect that sometimes it's okay for them to investigate crimes if there's a reasonable suspicion that there's crimes, We're not, just because okay, okay. it was their opponent. But the precedent that's set is for the DOJ is that typically they are very cautious. This is something Comey's publicly talked about as well. But typically, this is one of the reasons why Comey got so much heat. The uh -huh. DOJ is typically very cautious about publicly declaring anything related to investigations close to election time because they want to protect the integrity or electoral process. The FBI doesn't typically want to come out and say things like, by the way, we're investigating this candidate that's running for president because it's not the FBI's job to determine who's voted for by the American people. This is one of the things that's talked about pretty publicly quite a bit comey's brought this up a lot um that is that stands in stark contrast to trump saying hey ukraine can you guys publicly announce that you started an investigation on biden's son? he didn't even wait for any results or for any investigation to happen he just wanted a public announcement that the investigation was even begun which well, shows pretty clearly that he's not really concerned about getting to the bottom of anything he just wants to hurt a political opponent no that i disagree but as is one we still have no evidence that trump specifically said that but even if we, we assume have tons we have so much testimony right now that shows who? that trump 
From so many people? What do you mean? I Okay. No, I, 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 honestly, I'm asking because we've had people say we presume this is what Trump wanted. But their number one witness, Sondland, says, I specifically Trump to Trump. He didn't say that. Now, you'll say, well, of course, Trump was lying. But even if we grant that, like, for example, with Hillary's investigation, the reason she was left off was because we couldn't prove intent. Why would that standard be any different here? We can't just say, well, a bunch of people presumed what Trump felt in his heart. By the way, that's the same thing they say about Biden. They presume that you Biden's don't need could... intent. You don't need to prove intent when it comes to things like extortion or quid pro quos. That's but you... not a, that's not the intent but... is part of the crime. But right, but you need to prove that that's what he intended to do. You have really a quid don't. pro. Well, why wouldn't if you? If I go up to you and I say you need to pay me like a thousand dollars or I'm going to kill you, that like that's the crime is done in and of itself. If you, you say that, that, but if you just say, "Hey, I'd like Rob to give me a thousand dollars," and then people say, "I presume that meant he threatened to kill him unless he gave a thousand dollars," that would be unfair to you. That's, that's just not people what Trump's presume. done. Trump made a request, and he and the the in, then he was holding the aid hostage in exchange for that request of an investigation. But we don't have proof of that. We we don't have proof that's and there's. Clearly, the only reason that we would need, um, uh, let me put it this way, the, the only way we could assume that would be if there's not other plausible explanations. And there's all kinds of other plausible explanations, such as we know that Trump doesn't want to give foreign aid to pretty much any country, such it's as- not Trump's call to make. Well, I know, I understand that, but, does. but that's a different issue as to whether or not this is impeachment, whether it was extortion. That's just you saying Trump's using executive power more than he should, which by the way, I agree he and all presidents, at least in my lifetime before him, have done. I find that to be a very reasonable criticism of Trump, that um, he's expanded. Why has Trump kept about. so many people from testifying if, if he thinks that he's in the clear or whatever, if he, if he thinks that he's fine? Why has he kept so many people, like all the people that could either exonerate him or, or convict him, I guess, depending on their testimony, why has he kept people from testifying if, he's so con if he thinks he's so much in the clear? Well, because it's his right. Because he, why did he release the transcript? Like, he's been asked to do He didn't things. release a transcript, to be clear. That wasn't a word-for-word -word transcript of the call. That was like a summary. Yes. Yeah, like, a, but even okay. the Democrat witnesses admitted that it was, the tr that the summary acts as an effective was transcript. Fairly accurate, because sure. it was pretty accurate. With the, I think they quibbled about, did the word company, was that replaced with the word Burisma? But, but I, I, I'll give you that. I understand what you're saying. But... It's the, sa the same argument could be used all the time. You could use the same argument for Biden. Why is Schiff refusing to let the whistleblower testify? Why is Schiff refusing to have Joe or Hunter Biden testify? Now, this isn't one about is well, it. Why do we keep, yeah, it is. We, no. Why do we keep pivoting to these guys? The question is whether or not Trump abused his power of the president to withhold foreign aid until an investigation was announced by Ukraine. That's the question. Fuck Biden and Obama and Hillary and, and John F. Kennedy and anybody else we want to talk about. None of these people matter to this. I don't care about any, I don't like any of these people. I'm but, not going to defend them. Fuck I'm, not Biden, okay? I'm not asking you to defend them. The point is, if there is reason for an investigation, then what Trump did wasn't impeachable. If there That's is not a true, sure even if they did something bad, even if Biden's son was the fucking devil incarnate, even if Epstein, all the child rape was directed by Hunter Biden himself, that still doesn't excuse Trump withholding aid until an investigation is announced by the Ukraine. It's Would you admit that it's not cut and dry? It's more of a political calculus when it comes to impeachment. That's not what we're talking about at all right now, but of course. But, right, so the argument would be then, what you're saying is the Democrats will say, we're fully admitting that Obama and Biden did exactly what we're accusing Trump of right now. And we're fully admitting that not only do we not want them impeached, but we're saying that even wanting an investigation into that is a bad idea and criminal. Right. But Trump okay. should still be impeached for this. Fuck Obama and Biden. Okay? But that's but not all, them. We what can't about... impeach them. We can't impeach them. They're not in office anymore. Sure, you okay? can still impeach them. In terms of criminal, what? You, I believe you could impeach a past president. It wouldn't have much effect, but okay, I, don't I know think what that's that means, the law. If you can, I've never heard that before. Maybe I you think can. you can. Even I don't know. Could, I won't, even if you could, then fuck them. Then do it. I don't care. But that still doesn't exonerate Trump. But <laughs> like, no. But it's not them that I'm concerned about. It's the Democrats like Schiff, like Pelosi, like Schumer. Because we know then if if our argument then becomes well, Trump should go down for this, even though we know the Democrats did this four years ago, and many of those same Democrats were okay with it then and are now voting to impeach. That's the double standard, and that's because Wait, it's a political. Okay, with what then? Nobody else was withholding aid from foreign countries yes. in exchange for. That's exactly what Biden admitted to do. That's what the Obama administration did. Exactly oh, what they did. Biden was not the president. Right, Obama. He he said in his conversation. He said, "I told them you have six hours to fire this prosecutor, or I'm withholding a billion dollars aid." They said to Biden, in Biden's own word, "You're not the president." Biden said, "Call him." He said that we could do this. 
So yeah, you're right. It's not Biden. It's the Obama administration. He gave Biden the go-ahead to withhold aid that was congressionally approved unless they fired a prosecutor who happened to be looking into Biden's son. <clears throat> okay. I don't know if that's 100% true because I haven't looked into that. I suspect that that's exactly how it went down. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the rationale there was far different because there was a lot of corruption surrounding that prosecutor. I don't know 100% if that's true. Mm -hmm. It's what I've heard, but I haven't looked into that. But even if that was all true, okay. even if Obama himself said, fuck you, blah, 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 and withheld aid, that mm -hmm. still doesn't exonerate Trump. Well, it does in the sense that I think that it's okay for uh, us to engage in foreign policy. I have no problem with our executive authority withholding foreign aid to get something in exchange as long as it's to benefit the country and not to benefit yourself personally. It's to benefit Trump. But that's, that's why the starting question is, that's why it's not whataboutism. If we could prove that there if was- If we knew about this all the time, why didn't Trump do this investigation at any time over the past four years? Well, why if, have we waited till now? Sure, if you watch, and you watch the testimony from all the Democratic witnesses, all of them said verbatim over and over, Zelensky is finally a guy that's anti-corruption. He's the real deal. He's surrounding himself with prosecutors to fight corruption. I don't know if you knew this, but Zelensky was basically the John Stewart of the Ukraine. He's a stand-up comic. And- you had, this is, real quick, if you give me 30 seconds, uh, this is just my layman's view of what's going on in the Ukraine. You had, like, 2014, uh, you had this president, Yukonovich, who was, like, a pro-Putin stooge. Then he gets removed for Poroshenko, who's basically a Western stooge. The people of the Ukraine are just sick and tired of it, just like me and you would be with our political system. They just want someone looking out for themselves. So 75% of them vote for a stand-up comedian. This is Trump's first attempt to talk to this person. And so he's just like, hey, are you going to investigate corruption that occurred in the past administration? Okay. Um, and that's why I think... I guess we'll just have to wait and see how the impeachment hearings turn out. And we'll go from there. Like I said, I'm not super invest, uh, invested in this topic. Um, I just I find it strange how much charitability we extend when we're a Republican to Trump and then how like quick we are to convict past presidents who are Democrats of certain crimes. But I don't really care much about the impeachment stuff. We'll wait and see. Well, if I could just say, I don't feel, and I understand, and you're perfectly within your rights and probably correct to assume, um, to paint with a broad brush. I think that people on all sides tend to be super forgiving and super one-sided when defending their uh, side. but And I'm guilty of that as well. But I am telling you, I had no problem with Obama working with foreign allies to investigate Trump for possible collusion with Russia, or Obama's DOJ or whatever. So I, I don't think that that's the case. And I think that all I'm trying to get is, uh, I think for you and your audience, and correct me if I'm wrong in painting with a broad brush, I would guess that most of you dislike Trump and probably would want to see Trump at least lose the 2020 election. And I would point you to people like Jimmy Dore and Glenn Greenwald, because I think they're right that all of these investigations are actually harming Democrats' chances of beating Trump in 2020. You want to talk about an optics point of view? I don't think impeachment is good at all, but that's a totally different question sure. about whether or not Trump has committed crimes or whether or not you should be worried at how Trump is acting in the office of president. But, but I think, though, that... I'm more worried the fact that we have an entire establishment, particularly the establishment Democrats, that are doing everything possible to uh, cover up the actual investigation we should be having, which was 2016 Ukrainian election interference and uh, the Bidens and their role in the Burisma company. I mean, we were told- that Probably wouldn't end well if we were to do that because that, um, the Yukovich, whatever the, the um, what was the guy's name? Uh, Yukonovich. Yukonovich. Um, Manafort extensively helped that guy's campaign. So I'm guessing that anything you dig up there is probably going to come back on, on on Trump to some extent as well, because Trump decided to surround himself with people like Manafort. So, I mean, like, I doubt that he's very invested in any type of uh, investigation that involves that anyway. So, well, I mean, but that's kind of the crux of this in the first place. We have public. We were told for three years that foreign election interference is the biggest deal in our country. No stone could be left unturned. Now we have public admissions in the Financial Times of August 2016 from uh, a par parliamentarian in the Ukraine named Lyshenko admitting that he worked with the Anti-Corruption Bureau, which is the FBI of the Ukraine, in releasing a black ledger about Manafort because he wanted to swing the election for Hillary. Now that's election interference. We also have proof that there was a DNC operative named Alexandra Chalupa that actually was working with officials in the Ukraine to get that dirt. That's exactly what Trump was accused of for three years. But every single Democrat on the impeachment testimony said, oh, no, no that's a conspiracy Wait, theory. Wait, did this? Ugh, fuck. I don't think, I, I feel like I've heard about this, and I feel like none of this actually happened. Oh, it happened. I mean, I could send you the evidence uh, via email or uh, whatever. Like, do, you believe, do you think that there was any conspiracy, like the Gustaver hacking with Russia working with Assange or anything like that? Or do you believe that all of that is fake? Or I, 
I don't know. I, I'm very distrusting of the intelligence community. I have questions, for example, as to why the intelligence community would capitulate to the DNC and not get their hands on the physical <laughs> server. But I'm willing to say, I could well, say- they for... didn't get their hands on the physical server because they didn't need the physical server. It wasn't necessary. Like you don't need a physical drive to, to analyze the contents of the drive. So you can take an image of the drive. You don't really need, having a physical drive doesn't really do anything. Right? But we know that from Comey's own testimony that the FBI prefers to have the physical copy because their, uh, their worry is they're the best professionals at this in the world and they don't want to rely on a possible mistake copying from a private company like CrowdStrike. So so the FBI actually did request, and the DNC denied allowing access to the physical. Why would they do that unless they had something that, if it was going to be the exact same as getting a copy, what incentive does so the this is So like the Ukraine interference stuff that you've brought up, I'm briefly familiar with. I'm uncomfortable mm -hmm. talking about it, because, but I'm like 99% sure. sure that that is entirely baseless conspiracy no, theory. It's that, like, not, the I could hear that push that got fired for like corruption or some shit, yeah. that none of that actually happened the way that, but but the, the fact that like, but maybe that did happen, but the fact that you're so willing to believe that, but you're saying, I don't really trust the FBI's conclusion on, on the investigations that they did, that's highly suspect to me. Like, so you think that all of that, all of the indictments that Mueller made relating to those Russians, the the Internet Research Agency, the the um, the shell company that they had operated, US, all of that was one hundred percent fabricated and fake. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. In fact, I'm saying I'm basically agnostic on the hack. That it could very well be that the FBI. I don't know enough technologically wise to know whether or not it happened as is being said. So I'm not condemning that the FBI was wrong about that. And in my argumentation and dealing with these things, I've assumed that they're right when it comes to the hack. Now, I have questions why they didn't get to the physical server, but that's neither here nor there. As far as the uh, the Russian trolls and the using Pokemon Go, yeah, that's a joke. Uh, not only is it a joke, I'm sure they did it, but for example, a judge actually admonished Barr and um, Mueller saying that they're no longer allowed to publicly say that those people in that agency were connected to Putin because they have presented zero proof. So what we have is 12 people who happen to be Russia that were putting a bunch of stupid memes on Facebook and Twitter. If we're going to act like that seriously affected an election where half a trillion dollars were spent... And all sorts of things in the mainstream media. I mean, that's wait, wait, a joke. Wait. Okay, hold on. Actually, can you tell me real quick what did what did you just say that um, a judge told Barr and someone else that Barr and Barr? Yes, uh, a judge. What was the judge's name? Uh, it's so so Mueller and Barr are no longer allowed to say the Internet Research Agency was was all fake. No, no, no. They're not allowed to say it was directed by Vladimir Putin. They thought that that was um, the judge found that that was actually leading a potential jury because they had presented no proof, even to this judge, that there was any connection to the Russian government whatsoever. And that was the can judge you, that was... You, well, I can wait a few minutes. Can you throw me up a link on that? Sure, I, I, like I absolutely, of, yeah. absolutely will okay, try to sure. do that. Uh, okay, I, and I can wait a few minutes. I understand if you don't have this on hand. Yeah, I, 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 I'm I really, really sorry. To see this. By the way, uh, you're absolutely correct to demand people put sources up uh, because anyone can see. Uh, so... Sorry, my internet's. So I got this Washington Times article. I think this will do it. And it's, uh, I'll put a link up, but let me just read it real quick to make sure it's the right one because I'm just getting that. Federal judge sides with Russian company rebukes Mueller and Barr from the Washington Times, July 21st. It says, it has chastised Mueller and attorney Barr for stating Russian government was behind the election year social media. The ruling by District Judge Dabney L. Friedrich culminated in a secret legal battle between the Justice Department. Um, and I'll put that link if you want as well. But yeah, basically... Oh God, I already have it. Hold on one second. Let me read this. Book. Sure, please. I'll leave you go. Okay, so this is saying that basically the judge is telling Mueller and Barr that they're not allowed to state to a jury that the Kremlin like was personally involved in the direction of this company, but that it was still a Russian company that yes. was involved in like American propaganda, right? Yes, exactly right. So we okay. all we know is that so the idea that this was at the behest of the Russian government, we don't know that at all. Uh, we don't have proof of that. We just have proof it was a Russian company. 
And I don't so deny that this Do you think happened. it's more likely to assume that just a random Russian company decided to set up shop in the United States under a fake name and then mislead Americans that worked with them into thinking they were working with fellow Americans to try to throw the election for a different candidate? Well, what I think is most likely is irrelevant as to what actually happened and what could be proved. I mean, I also think what's most likely is probably, and this is just my opinion, they really didn't care if Trump or Hillary won. I think they assumed Hillary would win, and so they wanted to muddy up the waters, which is why they placed that same internet research agency pushed all kinds of like pro Black Lives Matter stuff, pro LGBT stuff. After the election, they were personally responsible for starting rallies against Trump. So they just wanted to mess with the system. But it's, I'm glad that you bring that up because this proves the actual contention of why we need to investigate all election interference. Because I will concede to you that if the hack did actually happen from Russia to the DNC and to Podesta's emails, that's a bigger deal than this IRA stuff. You, you would agree and with you don't that. Believe the, you don't believe the investigation right now um, that, that points to um, Guccifer being directed by Russian sources hacking into the DNC? You don't think that 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 investigation was good or that that was proven? I, no, I'm not saying that. I'm assuming it was proven. I'm j always skeptical anytime that I don't personally see proof, whether it's to benefit my side or not. For example, I was skeptical. I think the worst thing Trump's done in his administration was bombing Syria. Now I think we're seeing credible evidence that it turns out the chemical attack wasn't as it was seen. But I was skeptical of that information from the intel community. I'm not saying that it's wrong, though. I'll take them at word, and I'll say that, to me, is obvious. All I'm saying is that's a step beyond these Russian trolls, right? Like, I think we could agree with that. The idea of hacking Hillary or her campaign manager's email is a bigger deal to me than 12 <laughs> Russian trolls posting memes. Sure. I don't like how you... Um how you phrased the, the last thing i think the last thing is still pretty troubling but yeah the, okay. the hack that and the, and the hack is also something that was um i think with more evidence was stated to have been directed by the kremlin um if you read those indictment logs that is the yes that is what they found so that that is a difference between um what was going on with the ra and what's going on with the hacks they can directly tie the hacks mm -hmm. to the Russian government. So yeah, I, I will agree with you. Now again, I stand that I'm skeptical and ready to hear counter evidence, but I'm operating on the assumption that Mueller is right and that that is actually what happened. That's the assumption I'm... And by the way, I'm by no means my Putin fan, and I think it is outrageous. If he hacked, I don't care if it was my candidate, a candidate that had nothing to do with an election, that's outrageous and should be investigated. But the reason I bring up the IRA point is, even with that, even with these Russian trolls, and no matter how severe, like... I'll admit that my bias is leading me probably to downplay uh, what they did compared to what you would uh, take on it. But the point is, this is proof that even Russian or even foreign interference of that level of just releasing dirt is worth investigating. We've been told it's a big deal and it led to indictments. So why would it be different all of a sudden in the Ukraine? Why would we allow Ukraine? What is, what, okay, Sorry. what is this Ukraine thing that we're talking about investigating? What, what are you referring to specifically now? Sure. Uh, so. For example, we had a Financial Times 2016, August 2016 article where a parliamentarian named Sergei Lyshenko publicly admitted to working with the Anti-Corruption Network, which uh, was set up with the help of the Obama administration. That's called the NABU. Um, and what they did was they released this black ledger on details of Paul Manafort. And they released that, uh, we now know through other articles, that was in conjunction with a DNC operative named Alexandra Chalupa. But you can leave her out of it for now. Just know that parliamentarians in the Ukraine admitted to interfering in the election, releasing dirt, and they did so because they expressly said, we hate Trump, we think that he will be someone who's more willing to talk to Russia. Almost 90% of our uh, politicians are on board with Hillary. That's election interference. Uh, you might say, well, good, Manafort sucked. But it's still interference. No one said the interference is allowed if it's truthful. People are saying that this same guy was fired for corruption and later retracted these claims. Is that true or not? That's not anything about that. Uh, if, if I could clear that up, that's not true. This person's name is a man by the name of Lesh. Wait, hold on, your mic, your mic. Hold on, hold on. your mic keeps cutting out. Sorry, uh, can we go on? I'm sorry. Can can you hear me? Uh, yep. The uh, this man's a man by the name of Leshenko. L e s h c h e n k o. Yep. Uh, Lutsenko was a former prosecutor. That's someone that they're saying was corrupt. Uh, I have quibbles with that as well, but I'm not talking about Lutsenko. I'm talking about Leshenko. And if you look up uh, Financial Times, it might be behind a paywall, but Financial Times, uh, Leshenko, L-E-S-H, 
C-H-E-N-K-O. Uh, it'll come up and you can see his public admission. This is August. Okay, 2000. wait, real quick. I just want to see real quick if these are actually two separate people. Can, sure. Because I haven't read anything. I really don't care about this impeachment stuff that much. But um, um, he's literally talking about Ukrainian officials talking shit about Trump. That's what he's referring to when he says there was interference in the election. So what exactly are we talking about when we talk about like election interference when it comes to this Ukraine stuff? So what they've admitted to doing, you can check out a Politico 2017 article or the Financial Times 2016, mm -hmm. what they've admitted to doing was there was an ongoing investigation into uh, this guy, Yukonovich. And you said it would be bad for Trump to bring this up because he was connected to Manafort. You're, you're right about that. There was connections between Manafort and the previous president, Yukonovich. There's an ongoing investigation into him in 2016. Parliamentarians and in investigators decided to, while this investigation was ongoing, illegally leak that information to the United States. Now, there's good evidence they leaked it with the help of a DNC operative named Alexandra Chalupa. But they publicly admitted to leaking this in August of 2016. That's official dirt as to official records they had. We now know that, that Mueller didn't even find that black ledger credible enough to use it in his indictments of Manafort. So it turns out it looks that it's highly skeptical that the dirt they released on Manafort was even true in the first place. But they publicly released... There are... I'm not concerned. I agree with the audience that's bringing up... I thought the Republicans were absolutely stupid to bring up this point. Oh, well, some Ukrainian ambassador talked crap on Trump. Who cares? Trump probably deserves to have crap talked on him. And uh, I don't have a problem with that at all. But actually releasing this evidence, which later turned out to not even be credible enough for Mueller to use for an indictment, that seems to be exactly what Trump was accused of, of working with a foreign government to all right, get okay, okay. I'll, I'll look into this because I just don't, I honestly, I just don't care about the impeachment shit that much. I'll look into this. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, I just don't know about the, the facts of the matter for this. So. Okay. Well, Hey, that's fair. I, I, I really appreciate that. If I wanted, if, if there was one other thing, I think this shows Something endemic, though, that we see going on with these investigations, which is it seems that every time there's any kind of foreign interference that could have benefited the Democrats, that it seems that we brush that under the table. For example, what would you say was the biggest Russian interference into our election in 2016? Probably the um, probably the hacking of the DNC, but I don't care that much. I've never really cared that much about like impeachment stuff. Okay, well, I would, that's, I guess, would be a good vote. I would think that even more than that, though, you know that the dossier was sourced by Kremlin officials. The dossier was sourced by Kremlin officials. I thought the dossier was originally worked on by, was it Christopher Steele? Yes, and he, so, uh, most, he had source A and source B. He admitted source A and source B are both Kremlin officials close to Putin. And that's okay. where all of the allegations about Carter Page being in, uh, or Cohen being in Prague and Carter Page dealing with Russians to try to get uh, gas shares in order to throw the election for Trump. That's where all of these accusations came from. We know for a fact the dossier was used to get a FISA warrant to spy on Carter Page, which in its own right is the biggest political scandal in the history of our country that you used. Okay, wait, wait, okay. Do we have anything non impeachment shit to talk about? <laughs> Well, I have, I, there are so many like crazy conspiracy theories regarding a lot of these claims that I, I like. I have to go back and fa like I did this. I did the the this stuff a long time ago. And man, dude, Republicans make up so much random shit when it comes to this. I, I have to go back and look all this shit up again, um, okay. rather than just kind of like let you spin like a really crazy narrative. Um, I, I just I need to get the facts of the matter straight again if I want to go back and have these conversations. Oh, okay, that's um, fair. Is there anything like non like impeachment related that that I, so we don't have to rely on like all this like crazy fucking shit to have a conversation or? Um Sure. I don't think that was necessarily impeached. If I'll just summarize it here real quick. All I'm trying to say is that I don't think it's debatable. I think that it's just out there. It's public fact that the Kremlin officials were behind this. Why aren't we investigating the Kremlin officials that their dirt was so effective that it led to a three-year investigation that affect our elections? Like, it seems that... I, first of all, the investigations didn't affect our elections. Trump was already elected. So that's a false narrative. What affected the 2018 speaking. election? Secondly, M maybe, maybe not. We don't know that. Well, uh, but, but but wait, no, wait. Let me in what? in the interest of honesty, then. Well, we could say that Trump talking about Biden that election's not for a year from now. Well, we've never said that that's affected anything either. Well, you but don't that's understand that, like, in order for it, no, it doesn't have to be a quid pro quo. Doesn't require that the, that the outcome is successful. It doesn't require that a that a blackmail or an extortion or anything actually works. None of that is required for it to be a quid pro quo. Maybe it doesn't have any impact whatsoever. But like, r regardless, like, if if we want to talk about how upset we are that a potential investigation can affect an election, why were we so quiet when Hillary was constantly being bombarded with stuff related to Benghazi or emails? It seems like we never cared about it then, but now we do. Now it's just like I. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just don't care that much about but, the impeachment stuff. But I and, and if anything, if, if we look at the polling, like all the Republicans are emboldened anyways when this investigation type of shit happens. Like, look at Kavanaugh. Like, the, the support for Kavanaugh grew in the wake of those investigations. The support for Trump has actually grown after the testimonies of... Oop, I lost. Investigations are actually hurting Trump. Oh, he's still there? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. sorry. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, no problem. Uh, no, I agree with you, but I'm not the one who was uh, starting on the position of, oh, we should avoid investigations because they'll interfere with the election. That is an argument that the Democrats are making. I understand your more nuanced argument is that process... I thought the argument that the Democrats are making right now is that there's just an investigation to see if Trump withheld foreign aid in exchange for favors from Ukraine against political opponents. It doesn't have to do with election interference. Oh, like, no, no. be a byproduct, but... No, if you if you listen to Schiff, all of their narrative coming out, it's not about the... Pro they know they can't argue about the process or they'll be hypocrites because they know that the Obama administration also used a quid pro quo. So their specific argument is Trump did this in order to go against his biggest opponent in the 2020 election. This was to benefit Trump in the 2020 election. In fact, they specifically had many witnesses say they presumed that's what this was about, was a helping Trump in the 2020 election. So I do respect that your position's more nuanced, and I actually think it's a firmer ground to stand on. But no, the Democrats are making the argument this is all about the 2020 election. So I'm agreeing with you that I think that's nonsense. I don't think that should factor into our calculus. If there's a okay, crime I don't know if I agree with you there, because I'm not <laughs> sure if that's... Like, I don't know if that's... That's a good try in my point. part, though, right? Like, it took a long... <laughs> Long time for Pelosi to come around on impeachment here, right. so but okay. Um, <laughs> all right, well, hey, listen, yep, I'll, I'll, if we want, we can chat at like a later date about this, and I'll start doing all my reading right now so that I can get a hold on this. But man, what a waste of time! I don't know why, like, so much time is spent on the impeachment stuff. Like, it's a legal process, like, it has to happen, it'll go down its route, or not a legal process, but a legal slash political process, it'll go down its route. Um, I don't know, she's not something that interests me that much, but that's that's, that's fair enough. Um, Make sure to head over to Robert Noir's channel right now to see the full one hour and 40 minute debate and make sure to hit that subscribe button.